Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Biohacking Beauty Podcast. I'm very happy that you are joining me today. Today is a very special episode. It's a solo episode where I'm going to be covering the formulation and the reasons behind it of our new sunblock that we are just launching now and why we believe it's the next generation of uh, environmental protection and sunblock. And really what it's going to be, it's going to be a deep dive into a few things. First of all, obviously the formulation, why we decided on the ingredients that we've decided on and basically why we believe it's a revolutionary product. We're going to learn the different types of skin aging and what drives them. We're going to learn which molecules can negate those driving factors. And we are going to touch on basically different factors that we can utilize in order to make sure that our skin is not being affected by the environment. Before we dive into today's episode, it would mean the world to us if you took a few seconds out of your day to subscribe to the podcast. Again, not only that it's going to ensure that you will never miss an episode, but also would greatly help the growth of the podcast. So please take a second and do that. Last thing, we obviously remind you that this podcast is brought to you by Young Goose, the biohacking skincare company, which I'm the co-founder founder and CEO of, and we are very excited to be talking about our new SPF formulation. So without further ado, let's uh, start the podcast. So as I said before, this podcast episode is dedicated to our new SPF formulation, but I think it's important for us to start with talking about skin aging and, and what drives skin aging. So there are two main factors that drive skin aging. First of all is obviously chronological aging. And chronological aging can be described as basically the accumulation of DNA damage and corruption of DNA information or obviously epigenetic information that is caused from the passage of time. So basically our body is kind of designed to lose the information of how to function properly over time, which would lead obviously uh, to chronic disease and death. In our skin, it is being expressed obviously in production of less collagen, deterioration of our skin barrier, which is mainly the way that we can look at it. And that means that our skin barrier becomes less dense over time and does not stay hydrated very easily, which contributes to transepidermal water loss, as well as more damage that we sustain from the environment because there is less protection. But what science has shown us, and that gets us to the second type of aging or aging driver, science has shown us that environmental aging or environmental factors are more significant in driving skin aging. And they drive skin aging by creating damage. The first damage that they're creating, and that mainly we can talk about DNA damage again, the first damage that they're creating is damage to our DNA. So when UV light, for example, blue light passes through our cells and through our DNA, what it does, it, it corrupts the information. It fuses parts of our DNA together, and then our DNA has a harder time being read and expressed. That's number one. And that literally can be measured. Our body needs to then call upon reservoirs. If anyone remembers the NAD episode, we were talking about the huge amounts of NAD required in order to treat that damage or mitigate that damage, if any. And that is the first thing that happens. But free radicals also are being created in the skin through environmental damage. And that environmental damage is caused by pollutants. It is caused by EMF, but also UV and blue light. These free radicals, they also thin out our skin barrier, which we've spoken about before, but they also cause inflammation. They trigger a cascade of different metabolic responses that lead to collagen damage or loss of collagen, elastin. They can make our skin thinner, more brittle, more fragile, basically. And that is a bigger factor as far as the way that our skin ages through time or the way that our skin obviously is how aging is expressed because at the end of the road, what we are talking about is the way our skin looks as far as its age. And we can think of it as our skin's ability to maintain moisture is being uh, disrupted as well. So our skin is becoming more dehydrated, which is driving also structural changes in the skin. So all of that together really drives visible skin aging. That is why you will see that any product that we produce here at Young Goose is going to have ingredients that address environmental skin damage. Without it, really, we can promote youth, but we will not be able to sustain it. So if we only had anti-aging ingredients, but we did not shield the skin 
from environmental damage, environmental stressors, what is going to happen eventually is exacerbation of skin aging because we are going two steps forward and one step back, or actually the opposite. We're going to go one step forward and two steps back. Before we continue, I, I want to dedicate another minute to really define what is skin damage. So our outer layer of skin cells is actually dead skin cells. They're called corneocytes, but within them in a type of a brick and mortar structure, there are all the moisturizing agents, all the oils that protect our skin. Free radicals attack those structures and the deeper structures of the skin. And that disruption, that continuous damage causes inflammation, causes degradation of different structures uh, like collagen, elastin, etc., and also dehydration. And of course, we spoke about DNA damage, which obviously then makes it impossible or much harder for the skin to repair itself correctly. So all of those causes together, they are what we call skin aging or the dry for skin aging. And the apparent signs of skin aging is the conclusion of them. So skin dehydration and uh, rough texture, uh, dullness, formations of liners and wrinkles, eye bags and under eye circles, hyperpigmentation, either in the form of melasma, acne marks uh, that are left behind after the acne is gone already, and obviously age spots, uh, as well as redness and irritation, because when we don't have the protective structure in the skin, the skin is, is more susceptible to environmental aggressors, like we spoke about before, but in general to being irritated. So if you ever have exacerbation of irritation, redness, anything like that, the main driver of that is also disrupted skin barrier. So where do these free radicals come from? So obviously we have known for many years, for many decades, about the harmful effects of UVA and UVB of uh, ultraviolet radiation. But uh, recent studies have also shown that these free radicals are being generated also by visible light, especially the blue spectrum, especially artificial light. So when we are sitting in front of screens the whole day or we're under artificial light, this high velocity artificial light in the blue light spectrum really damages the skin as well and creates free radicals and also electrical magnetical frequency. So EMF, these are things that we're starting to see really affect skin aging and generate free radicals in the skin. Another environmental aggressor that generates a lot of free radicals in the skin are what we call environmental pollutants, especially particulate matter. These particulate matters are extremely small. They're smaller than our pore, and they penetrate really through our skin barrier all the way down to fibroblasts and keratinocytes and all of the different cells that make up our skin and are involved in skin repair, collagen production, elastin production, etc. So by penetrating all the way down and creating damage, what they are really doing is that they're breaking those structures breaking collagen structures, elastin fibers, shortening them, etc., and generating what we know as skin aging, wrinkles, pigmentation, loss of structure, dullness, sagging, etc. The good news are, because we can now identify all of the different subsets of particles and environmental aggressors that cause skin aging or that create free radicals and create damage in the skin, we also know how to protect the skin or help the skin deal with those environmental aggressors. And especially when we're developing a product or in the last four years, uh, where here in Young Goose, we were working on developing a product that is its job is to protect us. It's important to us not to only create a skin product or a sunblock that that protects from the sun, but also that addresses all of these different aspects of environmental damage. You can imagine if we had um, a bulletproof vest, but it only protected a very small area, only protected our chest, for example. It's not going to be a very good bulletproof vest because we are going to be exposed in every other area. So we want to create basically a bubble of protection, if you would, and make sure that we can address all of those aggressors in the most complete way. And the good news are science has shown us how to do it and has identified the most effective molecules in order to do that. And we're going to be talking about the molecules that we chose in uh, our new BioShield, the new uh, SPF formulation, in order to address those issues. So let's dive into each one of those uh, subsets of damage and see how here at Young Goose or what science uh, has shown us that would be the best way to deal with that subset. So let's start with UVA and UVB. So for many decades, we've known that these two subsets of 
of ultraviolet light cause free radical damage and DNA damage that needs to be dealt with. And obviously, we have two types of sunblocks that are popular, chemical and mineral sunblocks. The difference is mineral sunblocks are forming a physical barrier, which repels sun rays. And chemical sunblocks, they absorb sun rays and translate those rays into heat. The problem with that, which we've explored in depth in other episodes, the problem with that is that basically changes chemically the other components of the product that is laying on the skin and also limiting the amount of toxins that we can release from our skin. So chemical sunblocks, the sun in general is a detoxifier. It stimulates our skin to detoxify itself. And when a chemical sunblock creates a basically a layer on the top layers of our skin, that is like a, like a lens, you can imagine. It does not let toxins exit the skin and they basically concentrate on the top layers of the skin and it exacerbates toxic load in your skin. So that's something we want to avoid. That is why we choose mineral mineral sunblocks that do not cause this effect. They repel, they're like a mirror. They repel sun rays and they also allow our skin to breathe. The most effective and actually our favorite one is zinc oxide. And the reason is zinc oxide in general is actually beneficial for the skin. So the one that we use is transparent zinc oxide. It's a new development. It's non-nano sized, means it's going to sit on the skin, but it's transparent. What's good about that zinc oxide, it also soothes the skin. So when some of the rays do penetrate the skin and cause irritation or cause a little bit of inflammation, zinc can also soothe the skin the skin and, and has a positive result as a whole, which we're going to dive a little bit more into later on in this episode. So this is as far as UVA and UVB. The second subset are blue light or HEV, which is the visible spectrum of light that causes free radical damage and EMF. Both of those things, as, as we just said, they create free radical damage. We can get again from the sun, from digital screens, from artificial life, from anything that's plugged in basically to electricity. It's going to have some levels of EMF, but obviously our cell phones are going to have a lot of EMF, Wi-Fi, etc. So as long as we live in the modern society, we're going to be exposed to EMF and obviously to blue light as well. And these things generate a lot of free radicals in our body. What we can do in order to deal with those free radicals is use organic compounds. The, mo the most successful ones in that are specific peptides that help our skin deal with the damage of those free radicals and negate them and antioxidants, which leads me to, to subset number three, which is environmental pollutants. So environmental pollutants really are dust, smoke, cooking fumes, industrial activities around us, you can think of pollution in, in general. So these things create, as we said before, they can get into our pores, they can get into our skin, they can disrupt different skin functions, they can create more inflammation. So we want to make sure that we not neutralize them. And the way to do it is with uh, antioxidants. And again, this is a short review of these three subsets because what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the best ways to address it as far as ingredients. So let's talk about uh, BioShield, our new revolutionary SPF specifically. Um, first of all, as I stated before, it has the most amount of actives in the market that do not only protect from the harmful effects of UV, but it also uh, protects against the harmful effects of blue light and artificial light, also against the harmful effect in the skin of EMF and also environmental pollution. So all of the different categories of uh, environmental damage that we've covered before. Its color is tinted, but it is clear. It means it will blend with any type of skin type. It's basically, it's not makeup, okay? Men can use it as well, and it will blend into any type of skin up to what is called Fitzpatrick 5 and 6. The reason is its color is driven by iron oxides, which give it its, its tinted color. But these iron oxides we know in an SPF is the best way to combat melasma and pigmentation. So it's safe for all skin types. It is great for post-procedure, for rosacea, for acneic skin and for sensitive skin. And this is a product that we have worked to formulate with dermatologists. So it's safe for any skin type whatsoever. So what are the four major active ingredients 
in uh, BioShield. So the first is zinc oxide. So this is a mineral non-chemical sunscreen. We have 17% zinc oxide, which is equivalent to SPF 40. Again, protecting from UVA and UVB and is also soothing and is anti-inflammatory for the skin. Next is really a super a uh, super ingredient, it's called ectoin peptide. And this incredible peptide is what is going to give us the negation of blue light, artificial light, and EMF damage. So it repairs the skin barrier it provides intense hydration. Again, as I said, protects from blue light, from far infrared as well, that has some inflammatory and oxidative stress aspects to it, uh, wrinkle improvement, and is an antioxidant, as we said. Something interesting about ectoin is that, as opposed to normal moisturizers, when you, when you look at research on normal moisturizers, you apply the moisturizer, and when you stop applying the moisturizer, let's Let's say you applied it for a week. When you stop, you see a dramatic decline in skin hydration. Ectoin, on the other hand, even if you applied it for a week and then stopped applying it, you see that increase in hydration also in a few days after that. So it's an incredible humectant that we are very proud and excited to have in the product. Next, we have lipochromin 6. Lipochromin 6 is a very interesting antioxidant because it is, first of all, the strongest antioxidant on the market. It's around 20 times stronger than vitamin C, but it doesn't end there. What is interesting about it is that vitamin C, for example, mainly protects us from free radicals. They're oxygen-based free radicals. What is interesting in lipochromin 6 is that it protects from oxygen-free radicals, nitrogen, and carbon-free radicals. So when we're talking about pollution and we're talking about these factors that are external stressors, they obviously, a lot of them are carbon-based and nitrogen-based that normal antioxidants really do not protect against. And uh, that is what is exciting and amazing about uh, lipochromin, that it's not only extremely strong, much stronger than other comparable skincare antioxidants that are available to us on the market. It is also the most comprehensive 360 type of antioxidant. Last but not least, uh, we have a botanical complex that we've developed uh, over the last four years, that its major component is Japanese knotweed that has high amounts of resveratrol, which obviously is important to activate sirtuins because if you remember from the NAD episode that we did, part of sun exposure is the shutting down of sirtuins because a lot of that DNA damage calls for DNA repair, activating a set of enzymes called PARP, and these enzymes basically gobble up all the NAD and shut down sirtuins. So it was important for us to reactivate those sirtuins. But some other ingredients that we're going to cover in that botanical complex are moisturizing, soothing, brightening, firming. So this sunblock was really designed to be a skin biohacking and aging biohacking and reversing environmental protector and not only another run-of-the-mill sunblock. A few anecdotes about products that the, or the ingredient we just went over. So first of all, zinc oxide, the reason we chose that over other ones, first of all, it is provides physical protection. So it's not a chemical SPF that we went over. It's something that we want to avoid. So it reflects sunscreen and doesn't absorb it. That's number one. Number two, it's non-irritating. It's soothing uh, as well as sun protecting, which was important to us. A lot of people, including me, by the way, do not like to apply sunscreens because we feel like it clogs our pores. Not only that zinc oxide does not clog pores, it actually minimizes pore size, which is fantastic. And it's something that a lot of people who have used high levels of zinc oxide really like. And it does not cause acne, which is something that I do not have specific sensitivity to acne, but it's something that I never liked that sunscreens do. And last but not least, obviously it's safe for all skin types, which was important in our decision making. Next is our new hero peptide, which is called ectoin. And ectoin is very interesting. It's called an extremophile microorganism. And that's basically a compound that is microorganisms, bacteria in extremely salty water environments have. And it protects them basically from that extremely salty water environment by repairing the barrier, by creating a very robust barrier, which is something that we can harness and use to protect our skin and uh, provide barrier support for our skin. Aside from that, 
what we use it for and why we love it is that it um, allows protection from both HEV or uh, what we call harmful artificial light and from EMF as far as the damage of EMF to the skin. So amazing about it, we know both of these factors elevate levels of free radicals in the skin, which are very harmful as we spoke about, and ectoin is dramatically reduces those free radicals in the skin. Another protection it provides that we actually haven't spoken about until now is that it protects uh, cells that are called the Langerhans cells, which uh, comprise about 3 to 4% of our skin cells. They are actually the immunological cells of the skin. And emerging science suggests that a big part of what skin cancer is or development of skin cancer is when we expose our skin to the sun and the sun basically kills off the Langerhans cells in our skin. That's what new science kind of points out to. And ectoin really provides global protection to the skin cells as a whole and to the Langerhans cells and prevents them from being damaged. And again, this is part of the reason that we believe our sunscreen BioShield is a completely different approach and a new approach to sun protection. Another issue in ectoin as being a sun protectant, if anyone remembers me stating that vitamin C in some capacity improves the skin ability to handle UV damage, ectoin does that as well. That's why in a lot of papers, it's going to be compared to an antioxidant, even though it is actually a small peptide. What it does similarly to vitamin C is improve the ability of our cells to deal with sun damage that is uh, caused by UVA and UVB. Aside from that, and something that I'm sure everyone here would love to hear, is that it provides improvement in wrinkles uh, as a peptide. And that is something that is function is quite dissimilar to other ways that peptides improve wrinkles. So that's a unique aspect of ectoin. And uh, something that I've mentioned before is its ability to hydrate the skin. And I do want to dedicate a second to explain something. So a lot of people who have tried this moisturizer, as we said, it provides long-lasting hydration. And, it, and a lot of people confuse oiliness with hydration. So these are two separate things. When I talk about this moisturizer and I'm saying, or when I'm talking about this sunblock, I'm saying that it has a component that is extremely hydrating. A lot of people are asking me, oh, is that going to make me oily? So these are this similar. It's, it's not the same thing. Ectoin improves the ability of the skin to hold on to moisture. So when someone's going to apply it, they're going to see a type of glow that is not the same as being oily. The skin is going to be plump. It's going to be hydrated, but it is separate from the skin being oily. It smooths the skin. As we said before, it repairs a skin barrier due to its extremophil nature, and it reduces wrinkles and inflammation which is also something very important that we see a lot of people struggle with is redness and the subsequent inflammation of the skin. So that is going to help those aspects as well, especially if we apply it daily. And we should because we are going to meet some kind of environmental stress or whether it's going to be the sun, pollution, artificial light, EMF, obviously, uh, anywhere we go. So we recommend applying this product every day, whether you're going to be working in an office or, or not. Next, as I stated before, is lipochromin 6. So lipochromin 6 is an amazing antioxidant, not only because it is the strongest antioxidant available on the market. So there is a, a measurement it's called T-bar scale that gives a grade to all the antioxidants available. And on that T-bar scale, lipochromin is the strongest available in the market. It's about 20 times stronger than vitamin C. But again, it's not only about the strength, it's also about the breadth of the antioxidant protection. As we said before, it protects against oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon free radicals. And it's the only one on the market that does so. It's important, I think, to mention that studies that have been conducted 20 years ago onwards until today have pointed that combining sunblock SPF and antioxidants is creating synergy. It means one plus one equals three. So these two things together greatly boost the ability of the skin to, to survive the onslaught of sun exposure. Meaning to say, let's say we're taking another SPF 40 that does not have antioxidants formulated in it. It is not as effective as SPF 40 with antioxidants. And obviously we have the uh, lipochromin, which is broad spectrum antioxidants for that matter. And lipochromin has also been shown to uh, lessen wrinkles and lines. It is 
amazing at reducing hyperpigmentation. It brightens. Again, it provides amazing protection. So that is the reason we went ahead and chose the most effective antioxidant that we could find. Next is our botanical complex. So this botanical complex is something that also took us a very long time to formulate because it's basically a, a extracts of four compounds from different plants, from birch bark, from Indian frankincense, obviously Japanese knotweed root, which we spoke about before in uh, go to cola and the active ingredients polyphenols within those plants that we've harvested and we've done a thorough research into which one would be the most effective they're amazing on an epigenetic level to create responses in the skin that create you know it, they plump the skin and firm it they brighten an even skin tone they hydrate uh, reduce the appearance of pores which is extremely important for us as far as a sunblock because most of them do the exact opposite, provide more antioxidant protection, and they are also helping with the recycling of damaged cells over time. So that is why we've decided to go ahead and incorporate that uh, complex within the formula. And there you have it. This is the uh, this is the the new and revolutionary sunblock that we have created that is called BioShield, and uh, we love it. It is sheer. It has a uh, nice tint that is not like makeup. It doesn't stay on the skin. It is all mineral. It smells great. So there's no fragrance there, but part of the uh, the formulation is uh, rose and lavender essential oils. So as we know, if the sunscreen doesn't smell so well, I've tried some, you know, very expensive and very strong sunscreens. Some of them smell like popcorn. Some of them smell horrible and I didn't want to apply them on my skin. So this, this one smells great. It glides on the skin very easily. Easily. It absorbs very quickly, uh, blends with any skin skin tone, and obviously the most important, it is safe for all skin types. So I truly hope that anyone who's listening and is going to get it will love it. I know that we do, and we're extremely proud of it, and we would love to hear your impressions. Uh, so please write to us and let us know uh, how you like it. That's all about our uh, BioShield sunscreen. So thank you everyone who were listening. If you have any questions, you're welcome to uh, write to us at service at youngcoos.com and we are sure to answer any questions. The sunscreen should be available already on our website, youngooseskincare.com. Anyone who's listening to this podcast and would like to use the promo code uh, for their first purchase to get 20% off, the promo code is PODCAST20, all caps. Thank you very much to everyone who are listening, and I wish you uh, an amazing rest of your day and week. Mm-hmm.